हेलो हेलो सॉरी गाइस होप आई एम ऑडिबल नाउ फाइन ग्रेट ओके द फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन आंसर इज मेटाबॉलिक ऑल्ट्रेशन ऑफ द कॉज द डायग्नोसिस वाज गाउट गाउटी आर्थराइटिस फाइन सो आई होप आई एम ऑडिबल नाउ द इट्स नॉट ऑलवेज इनहेरिटेड द मोस्ट कॉमन कॉज ऑफ गाउटी आर्थराइटिस इज एक्सेसिव मेटाबॉलिज्म एक्सेसिव इनटेक ऑफ फैट एंड बियर अल्कोहल tumor like syndrome again is not the most common cause but yes gouty arthritis can happen in tumor like syndrome the deposit is not made of calcium it's your sodium urate by urate crystals right hope it is clear fine so i hope you got the hang of how this round is going to be there are nine more things if you have written it wrong that's completely fine you can get up in the next next nine thing the person who answers first will get the first um, more points and i'll just definitely give you a clue around 30 seconds or so so that if you're not able to get in the first thing you can get in the second one fine we'll go to the next question This is the image, and four options based on the image. Okay, the clue. This is a biopsy from a person who is seventy years old on the face, a lesion in the face. Fifteen more seconds for it. Great. Hope all of you have answered. Well done. Time's up. Fine. So I hope you have made the diagnosis here. It's a clear case of a basal cell carcinoma. The lesion is not a benign tumor. Definitely a malignant lesion. And BCC is one lesion where bony metastases are very very rare. Right. So option M O H is surgery. The microscopic cystic surgery is the way to. Uh, do the surgery for basal carcinoma because since it's a very low grade, uh, locally aggressive lesion, I want to limit the facial uh, to remove the extra normal tissue. That's based on microscopy and a routine frozen section done there, right? And HMB forty five is not required here because HMB forty five is a marker for melanoma. That was not melanoma. Fine. Okay, great. Nine of you got the correct answer. Fine. It's the whole keep shifting every time. Fine. The next time question. The simple image. Read all the four options carefully and write the answer. If you are not able to pick up the image, the clue is that's an endoscopic image of an esophagus. Ten more seconds. Fine. Now time's up. This is a simple one, right? I hope most of you have written the correct answer. Okay. Uh, fine. I think you went ahead and wrote the answer faster. That was in Barat's esophagus. The option A is risk factor for gastric adenocarcinoma. No, it's risk factor for esophageal adenocarcinoma. Option B is risk factor for squamous cell carcinoma. Based on it, is no. It's a risk factor for your esophageal adenocarcinoma. Perfect dysplasia is not associated with the condition. It's always not irreversible. The low grade dysplasia is obviously irreversible. Why obesity can cause this condition is because of obesity, the fat can happen within the diaphragmatic pleura, pleura, which can cause an GERD. A long term GERD can cause Barrett's esophagus. Right. So option four is the right answer. Please read the questions and the options carefully and go ahead. Again, since the time is more important for you to score up. Doesn't mean that you have to write faster and go with the wrong answer. Fine. You go to the next question. You need to be right more than to be fast. Okay, a clue. This is not a malignancy. Okay, 
last 10 seconds. Back up. There are two, three of you who have not written it. Okay, last five seconds. The person who has not written it, please write the answer. And the time is up. Great. Let's see the poll. Wow, great. It's a very good poll. First thing I thought most of you will go with smudge cells. Great. That is not lymphocytes, and that's your perfect downy cell, right? It's not ALL. The person who is marked most common leukemia must have thought as an ALL. I gave a clue at 30 seconds so that if you don't pick it up, you might pick it up later on. RSL is definitely not seen in the biopsy. It's downy cell which is seen in infectious mononucleosis. CD21 is the way the EBV virus can enter the lymphoid tissue. CD21 or your complement receptor too, right? So it's in spot. It's not a smart cell. It's your downy cell which is seen in infectious mononucleosis, fine. We'll go to the next one. Okay, question number five. You have a history here as well. Read the history and look at the image. Okay, the clue here, the no lymphadenopathy is a clue here and that's a bone marrow aspirate biopsy, bone marrow aspirate image. Okay, 10 seconds more, the students who are not written the answer can be fast. Last 5 seconds. Great. Let's see the poll. Wow, fine. Okay, so I hope you must have picked up the clue, the bone marrow aspirate at Russell cells and more of plasma cells. A 50 year old with bone pain and no lymphadenopathy. See, the no lymphadenopathy is a clue for not Waldenstrom's. Because Waldenstrom, it's macroglobulinemia, it's a lymphoplasmacytic lymphoma. Waldenstrom and multiple myeloma, that's the diagnosis of this case. The main difference is lymphadenopathy. Here, since the question says no lymphadenopathy, it's not Waldenstrom's. CD30 is not positive in multiple myeloma and it's not interleukin 10. If you remember, it's interleukin 6, which is important for the pathogenesis, right? If you missed that interleukin 10 and 6, next time, please be careful in their questions, right? CD56 and CD86, both of them, if they are positive, they indicate poor prognosis in multiple myeloma, fine? Great. We'll go to the next question. Okay, start. The simple one. I hope most of you have answered it by this time. There's no clue here, it's a bone marrow aspirate. If some of you are waiting for the clue. There are two people, two more people to answer. I don't know who is that. Okay. Last person, wait. All of you answered. Wait, let it go. I don't know to end the uh, poll. Fine. It's a simple one. It's a bone marrow spread. I'm sure you must have definitely picked up the crumpled tissue paper appearance. Crumpled tissue paper appearance, which came in the senior heat exam as well. Wow. A perfect poll of all 15 of you have written the correct answer, right? See, if you have an easy question like this, the fastest person who answers will get the more mark, right? So that's how we're going to go with the entire uh, thing in the quiz. Fine. Okay, we'll go to the next one. Okay, is it asking to type name every time? Okay, the clue here, it's an uh, biopsy of skin from a bullous lesion. Ignore me if I'm looking at two things. I'm also using two screens like you guys. Okay, last few seconds. Great. Let's see the response. Okay, fine. 
see i am sure that one thing you must have identified in the image was there was a biopsy of a bullous lesion with a dermo epidermal junction separation if you have a dermo epidermal junction separation my only possibility is either bullous pemphigoid or your epidermolysis bullosa aquasita right so here it's not the uh, dismoglobin 1 or 2 which is seen in pemphigus collagen 4 it's 7 is present in epidermolysis bullosa aquasita the antibody so option c is the right answer four of you are right given the correct answer great Okay, the next one. Okay, the clue here, this is seen as lesion as given above. Prima, this is for people who qualified the first prelims road which had happened in an academy a couple of days back. Okay, hope you will be able to join the next term and let's see. Okay, last 10 seconds. Okay, let's see how you guys have answered. All 15 of you answered it, great. So the diagnosis, I'm sure you must have made it. It's oligodendroglioma, right? It's not a dual base lesion, amazing. It's not always IDH negative. It will be IDH positive. And the most important thing required for me to diagnose here is my 1P19Q co-delation. That requires fish, fine. It's not a WHO grade 4 lesion. Glioblastoma is a WHO grade 4 lesion, right? Great. Okay, let's go to the next one. Okay, this is a bit faster fine the diagnosis was adenoid cystic carcinoma and the marker used for adenoid cystic carcinoma is cd117 and not bcl2 it's not adenocarcinoma that was a crepiform pattern seen in the microscopy and it was adenoid cystic carcinoma fine okay i think i think this is the last one in this session There's only 15 seconds here. Uh, sorry, there's some change there. So write the uh, write the answer a bit faster. Uh, last five seconds. Okay, great. Great. Uh, 15 seconds if you can answer. That's really really great. So the, we had two images here. One was had the dermal papillae. The other one had the immunofluorescence image, the granular positivity. The diagnosis there is dermatitis herpetiformis and it is seen associated with celiac disease, right? Okay, that was the correct answer. Fine, great. Okay, this is the score leaderboard as of now. I don't know what uh, you guys have named, so you can look at your scores and there are definitely three more rounds and these points will definitely juggle, right? So it's not that uh, you're going to go down from here. So let's see what's going to happen for the second round. Okay, the second round might be a bit difficult. Right, I'm not saying uh, it's completely difficult. You're going to have trivia here. So trivia in sense, it's not going to be uh, entirely medical based. You'll have some history in, into it. You'll have some other interesting things into it. Again, since it is the fastest th person who's going to answer first, the first clue, I'll give it around 20 seconds. The second clue, I'll give it around 35 seconds. So if you are going to answer in the first 20 seconds without a clue, definitely your points will go off. You must have seen it went up the ladder who answered it faster, right? And the second clue, if you answer after that, if you just want the right answer, you might wait for the second clue. That will be an easy one and you can pick the answer, fine? So we'll go with the first question. It's a trivia. So it might not be, it'll be medical only, but something in and around medical, maybe history, something like that sort. Okay. The first trivia, there'll be 60 seconds for the trivia. So the first clue will be 20 seconds and second clue will be at 35 seconds, fine?
Okay, wow, great. The first clue, it's an infectious disorder. I think two of you have not answered yet. Okay, all of you have answered, great. The second clue I wanted to say is it's a disorder which originated from Africa from rhesus monkeys. Great. So I hope you got the hang of trivia. Maybe from the next question onwards, it might be slightly on a difficult side. Fine. Okay. And I'm just waiting for the timer to go. It's Dr. Suniti Solomon, who was the first person who diagnosed and established the case of HIV in our country, right? That was the first thing she did in our country. Great. What? 14 of you writing the correct answer is an amazing thing, fine. I think most of you would answer the trivia because you must have known the name before, fine. Okay, I hope you got the hang of the trivia. There will be 5 more trivias like this. And try to think outside the box. Okay, let's start second question. Okay, the first clue, the biopsy image there is one of the things which these people found it. Okay, the second clue, the biopsy finding is H. pylori gastritis. I cannot give the third clue, the only clue I can give is the name of the scientist. Okay, last 10 seconds. If you're not answered, you can answer and let's start the discussion. Okay, all of you guys have answered. The one thing is very simple here. It's definitely not Watson and Creek, right? It's not DNA, it's not Watson and Creek. It's not Mallory Dink. Mallory Dink discovered something as great. Bobby Marshall and Robin Warren were the people who discovered the H. pylori and they got Nobel Prize for that, right? An amazing 13 person of you have written the right answer. I'm seeing more people writing trivias correctly more than our regular content, right? Okay, we'll go to the third trivia. Hopefully the trend continues and it'll be easy for you guys. Okay, the third one goes here. Okay, the first clue, the image given is a Greek god's image and there is an, something named behind the god. Okay, the second clue, the name is after named after a receptor. The receptor is involved in any one of the disease pathogenesis. Okay, 10 more seconds. I want guys answer the question. Okay, last 5 seconds. Okay, great. Final time's up. Let's see the poll. Wow, great. Okay, the image given was Janus Kinase. We know the Jack receptor. So Janus is the Greek god here. And it has two things similar. Similarly, the Janus kinase receptor also has two components which are mirror image of each other. So it was named as Janus kinase Jack. And Jack 2 mutations are seen in PRV, which is polystheme aerobravera. Fine. Great, guys. Eight of you still. It's a very, very good poll. I'll go to the next trivia. Okay, we're ready. Ready. Okay, the first clue, this disease involves lymph nodes and it was described in 1832, first time. Okay, 
second clue it's not uh, it's a neoplastic condition funny one third clue the name there absorbent glands and spleen it involves a spleen as well okay last 10 seconds Let's see the poll. Wow, amazing, right? So that was the original description of the drawing given by Hodgkins when he described Hodgkins lymphoma. Right? He described some lesion involving the glands and the morbid lymphoid glands as well as the spleen. Burkitt's does not involve spleen, so that would have given you a clue to rule it out. Amyloidosis and TB also involves the spleen. So the second clue which they gave, it's a neoplastic condition, would have narrowed it down to Hodgkins lymphoma, right? Just have a look at the entire thing and then let's come to the thing, okay? We'll go to the next question. Okay, join. Okay, we'll start the question. Okay, the first clue is an infectious disorder and both of them are different people. Okay, the second clue, it was discovered in Kolkata in a place Dum Dum. seconds more okay last few seconds great let's see the poll wow amazing so it's not malaria it was leishman and dono one that's why we name it leishman and dono one right so the, those are two people both of them are individual things so one described the disease and the other isolated the organisms in the mic mi microscope. I think Donovan isolated the organism and Leishman described the disease first, right? And credits was given to both of them and they named it Leishmania, Leishmania Donovan, fine? So eight, six of you wrote the correct answer, amazing. Fine, you go to the next trivia. I think this is the last of the trivia. Okay, shall we start? Okay, the first clue, read all the things given in the image. Okay, the second clue, the chimney is a clue here. Chimney sweepers had this disease. Okay, last 10 seconds. Great, time's up. So let's see the poll, how you guys answer. Wow, amazing. Okay, the images showed you one transcript of scrotal cancer pathogenesis, right? It was a Percival Pot who first said that chimney sweepers in Scotland had scrotal cancers because the carbon soup was getting deposited in the scrotum and that was transcript and the image was for chimney sweepers and there's one more image of chimney right so that's the first time chemicals can cause cancer was put up right this piece of information is there in drawings fine okay that is the end of second round the trivia round and let's look at the scores okay great so like i said the scoreboard will keep changing see so it's not always the person who's going to answer uh, last going to keep the last so keep answering the, the same pace definitely it'll keep changing and let's see who wins it okay so shall we go to the third one the third round 
is you have to come to a diagnosis connect the images diagnose them and i'll give you a clue with 30 seconds the faster you answer you can go and climb up the road right so i hope it will be good and we have same six cases it's just a connect there are four or five images and you have to come to a diagnosis and sometimes diagnosis itself will be the question or something related to the diagnosis right so if you're ready we shall go on to the first question okay let's start shall we start yes first turn I don't think so you require this clue. I hope this is an easy one. The clue here it's a mitochondrial disorder. I'll I'll try to explain all the images at the end of it. Ten more seconds left. Okay, last five seconds okay great so I'll try to explain it before that we'll see the poll wow amazing so you had a pedigree in the top left which was for the mitochondrial inheritance then you had an uh, um, rigidity like condition for that uh, image for the clinical feature there wasn't ragged red fibers I think that would have given you the clue the biopsy finding of ragged red fibers classical form and Merv syndrome and the other one which you had two mothers and the father that's was a proposed treatment for mitochondrial disorder called a triple parent baby where they get the ovum from the person who's not infected the mitochondria from the person a woman and the mother's mitochondria without the mother's ovum without the mitochondria and they fuse all of them in in vitro fertilization it is proposed but it was not so much successful that's one of the ways to treat in mitochondrial inheritance right again i hope you would have got the hang of this uh, round you'll have some of the images which will be connecting to one common finding and you want to come to the diagnosis fine so we'll go to the next question okay all of you are in great we'll start Okay, the clue, the last image could be the drug useful for treatment of the first image. Okay, last 10 seconds. Okay, last few seconds and the time's up okay let's look at the poll wow that's an amazing poll as usual right so i'll try to explain the images the first image i'm sure that's straightforward a rheumatoid arthritis deformity and he had an imaging finding of a massive splenomegaly the below image was an anemia a rheumatoid arthritis will have a normocytic anemia which is an anemia of chronic disease and the last one was methotrexate the question mark was the thing the methotrexate is a drug which can be useful Rheumatoid arthritis with anemia and massive splenomegaly is a classical case of Infeldy syndrome, right? Great, uh, I thought few of you will guys the heavy metal toxicity in the leg. Great, you didn't write it. And it's Bantu, Bantu syndrome, Bantu is, uh, is the hemochromatosis seen in those patients of Bantu tribe, right? Okay, we'll go to the next questions. Join in and then I'll start the question. Okay, we'll start the question.
Okay, the first clue, the first image is tree, not skin. Okay, last 10 seconds, one of you are not reading the answer, come to the answer. Okay, and the time's up. Wait, let's look at the poll. Amazing. So first image, as I said, it's a tree, the tree bark appearance. The second person was the first is the poet's image who described syphilis in his poem first. The third was your motheed and alopecia, and the fourth was a snail tractor, right? All of them the common denominator is syphilis, your uh, tree bark appearance of iota, the ulcers and alopecia. So the answer is going to be syphilis. I think those who are marked ichthyosis must have mistake the first thing for the ichthyotic crash, right? Okay, we'll go look, look at the next one. All of you enter and then we'll go to the next question. All of you are in, so let's start. I hope the options are visible. Okay. The first clue will be for uh, the image that's a bone marrow biopsy image. And maybe what's written in the peripheral bit P is the patient, N is normal. Okay, I'll give you one more clue since only two of you have answered. The CT image shows a portal vein or a hepatic vein thrombosis. Okay, last 10 seconds. Okay. It's time's up. Let's look at the poll. Wow, amazing. I think the portal vein, hepatic vein thrombosis would have given you the hint, right? It was in Bacchiari syndrome which is common in polycythemia. If you look at the last image, the patient's P image had lots of RBCs. That's again documenting the increased hematocrit in these patients. And the bone marrow biopsy had RB, the hematopoietic lineage, all three lineages, the megakaryocytes, your WBCs, myeloid lineage, and your hematopoietic lineage, the erythroid lineage, which says the panmyelosis. Panmyelosis, Bacchiari syndrome, and increased hematocrit count as your polycythemia beta, fine. Okay, let's go to the next. A lot of you join it. I think this next will be the last of this round. No, there'll be one more. Fine, let's start. Okay, the first clue, in the liver biopsy, absence of something gives you the answer. Okay, last 10 seconds. Okay, hope the poll will be good as usual. Wow, great. I think Wilson's misdiagnosis would have made because of the IE finding, right? So th that's not, that's an allyl syndrome. The biopsy finding gives you the exact answer. Positive of bile ducts is a classical finding. And you have the, the vertebral lesions characteristic. I, about the other image, right? It's a combination of allegal syndrome, okay? Okay, the next one. Join in. Yeah, I think this is the last of the uh, conduct and diagnosis round. The next will be rapid fire, fine? Let's start. This might be a bit tough. tough.
look at the clue there's a oral cavity lesion not an epithelial lesion okay second clue the cytoplasm of this tumor is extremely granular which is pas positive Okay, last 10 seconds. Okay, time's up. Let's look. Okay, great. See, I, the second clue which I gave must have given you some hint. I said the cytoplasm is extremely granular. It is not an ameloblastoma. There's a tumor which I'm looking inside from the oral cavity. So it's a soft tissue tumor which is causing a bulge in the oral lesion. Ameloblastoma will be the jaw, right? I'll have a swelling which might push. So I didn't have an X-ray finding here. So unlikely to be an ameloblastoma. And in ameloblastoma, I'll have something was in reverse polarity that was not here. Here I had nest of tumor cells with pink cytoplasm, the granularity which is PA is positive, and TFE3 is an immunohistochemistry. chemistry. That's a group of tumors which are TFE3 positive. One of them is granular cell tumor. I hope you know the other one which happens in the kidney. XP11 translocation of surgical carcinoma that's also TFE3 positive fine okay that brings us to the end of the third round and let's look at the load leaderboard okay okay see I don't know who's Pala you have written the fastest in this round and you've gone a little bit higher fine Let's see, the last round is going to be totally based on your way to answer it. There will be two options and some questions might have three options. See, either you know the answer or it's just going to leave it, right? Uh, fastest is going to be uh, whoever writes fast will, be the correct answer, will get the correct answer. I think each question will have 15 to 20 seconds maximum. So if you know it, write it fast and don't be very fast and miss it by a uh, silly mistake, fine? Let's start. Okay, all of you in. Okay, the first question goes here. It says 15 seconds. Okay, great. Let's just let's see the poll, right? A B C D one G is the right answer. There's no ATP seven B seven A seven C seven E is Menkes Kinkes heart disease and seven B is Wilson's disease, right? Okay, let's go to the next. You can score very high in this round. There are close to 20, 20 plus questions. Let's see the next one. Fastest finger first. Time's gonna be up. Great. Let's look, have a look at the poll. Wow. Okay. See, uh, there are lots of sarcoma with lymphatic metastasis. One of the sarcoma which has more lymphatic metastasis is clear cell sarcoma. It's a melanoma of soft parts. So, like a melanoma, it can spread so much to a, a lymph node, right? Generally, sarcomas are hematogenous. Leomyosarcoma, sarcoma, it's not so common to have a lymphatic metastasis in leomyosarcoma. sarcoma. They go to the lungs or the liver, which is hematogenous, right? Next question join in and let's start it okay just two up there 20 more 23 more ah. amazing see when you have in a very quick session also who answers the first will get their more marks Wow, it's amazing. All 14 of you wrote the correct answer when switched to the IKI syndrome. It's a classical disease, right? Recurrent infection, giant granules on the WBCs and albinism. And there is gene mutation, right? We'll go to the next. Join in. Okay, let's start. Okay, 
okay great let's look at the response okay bad lymphocyte syndrome is an absence of mhc complex there are two types of bad lymphocyte syndrome for the mhc complex there was a question once in jimma exam on bad lymphocyte syndrome it's one of the rarest immunodeficiency disorder uh, which comes with the group of your scid and everything right here the entire mhc complex will be absent that gives the rise to the symptoms in the disease okay next join in okay let's start Okay, the time's up. Okay, GRDL MBO is a organism which is found in the duodenum, right? It causes your uh, malabsorption syndrome without entering the duodenum. Entrobius vermicularis is supposed to be one of the causes of appendicitis because they are very tiny worm, pin worm, which can go inside and into the lumen and block the appendix and cause a lesion, right? Okay, next. Join in. Okay, let's start. Ah, uh, sorry. I don't know why it's the same thing coming. Okay, give the right answer again. Ah, uh, sorry. Okay, the question might be an organism with uh, the disease with autoimmune hemolytic anemia and pneumonia. Apologies for that. Okay, that's mycoplasma pneumonia. I don't know why the question then changed. Fine. I hope there's no error from no one. Okay, we'll go next. I'll ignore that question while taking the poll, fine. Two narrow ones. Okay, it's SOX11, right? It's not SOX10. SOX11 is a marker which for cyclin D1 negative mantle cell lymphoma. That finding which came in your AIMS exam once, right? Okay, I'll go to the next. Join it. I expect a different poll here. Let's see. Ah, I know. Let's see. MRCP2 is a protein which is abnormal in Dubin Johnson syndrome. The question is asking gene. The gene is ABCC2, which codes for the protein MRCP2. Right? It's just the word play here. Uh, I think the fastest finger first must have backfired here. Fine. Right? I'll go to the next question. We have, I think, 15 more questions. Still, you can change the polls. Join. I thought you would have gone this with an elimination. Uh, CDX2 is a marker useful for intestinal adenocarcinomas. Beta catenin can is positive in case of hepatoblastomas. Beta catenin can also be positive in case of hepatic adenomas and hepatocellular carcinomas as well, right? It's a fine marker which will be useful for diagnosing hepatoblastoma, which is a malignant lesion of the uh, children, which happens the liver. Fine. Okay, next. Okay, I hope you have not made a mistake. All of you answer. 
not making a mistake and wrote the first option. Oh, okay. Primary effusion lymphoma is in hematopoietic malignancy, which is also associated with HHV8 and HIV virus, right? So answer is both. It's not just Kaposi. Both of them are associated with HHV8, Kaposi form virus, right? Great. Next question. Okay, let's start. Okay, let's look at the poll. Great. It's an acronym, right? Viscotalgic syndrome. You must have searched for viscotalgic syndrome. I would put a WAS just to make sure you get confused and write the write it faster. Right? Thrombocytopenia, eczema, and infections. Last protein is mutated and it's in and the diagnosis is viscotalgic syndrome. Wait. The next one. Gathering. Okay, let's start. Okay, great. Always both is not the correct answer, right? Mucovitreous lymph node syndrome is other name of Kawasaki syndrome. It's IG nephropathy is not that, right? Next. Gathering. Okay, I think 11 more questions to change the leaderboard. Question asks for specific IHC for melanoma. S100 is not a specific IHC, it's a sensitive IHC. I'll tell why it is not specific. S100 is positive in any tumors which originate from neural crystals. My melanocytes originate from neural crystals. So does my schwannoma, schwann cells. So that's the reason it's positive in my schwannoma as well. It's a sensitive marker, it is not a specific marker. Both melan A and HMB45 are positive only in the malignant hepatocytes, uh, sorry, malignant melanocytes, and they are the specific marker for melanoma. Right? Next question. Yeah, I think 11 more questions to change the leaderboard. Okay, the poll rises slowly. I think in keeping your pocket works for many. Let's see the poll. Okay, I didn't expect this. I'm sure I must have learnt IDH mutation in gliomas, right? Isocitrate dehydrogenase. SDH stands for succinate dehydrogenase. Succinate dehydrogenase seen in few sarcomas, renal cell carcinoma, and also just gastrointestinal stromal tumor. This Carney Stakaski triad, the syndrome has, has an SDH mutation, right? IDH is in glioma, SDH is seen in the tumors, what I just said, right? Go to the next. I think last nine questions or so. Okay, let's see how many of you fall fell for the trap. Okay, five of you. LYST is seen in Chidiac AIH syndrome, right? not Hermansky Pudlak syndrome. In Hermansky Pudlak syndrome, look at that HPS, Hermansky Pudlak syndrome. HPS one gene is mutated in Hermansky Pudlak syndrome, right? Okay, we got next question. Eight more questions for the final.
3, let's look. Okay, serious histidinoma lymphomatosum is the other name for Warthin's tumor. It's a tumor seen in salivary gland. Ovarian carcinomas are serious histidinoma carcinomas. It's not serious histidinoma lymphomatosum. Fine. Okay, we'll go to the next. Seven more questions. Let's start. It's an easy one, right? Let's look at the poll. Wow, all 15 of you get the correct answer. Just now we saw it's a no GRDI somewhere else. It's a non-invasive organism. Amoeba definitely is an invasive organism. Fine. Next. Okay, join in. Start. Okay, a clue for people who are not written. PSCN stands for pre -senal. All of you have written it, great. pre mutations are commonly seen in Alzheimer's. It's one of the genes involved in Alzheimer's. Right, pre one and two, fine. Next. Join in. I hope you didn't write the wrong answer in a hurry. Okay, let's see. Wow, great. Elite from is a mutation B53 and not B63, right? Great. Next. Five more questions. Let's see. It's diagnostic of myeloma, right? Okay. Fine. Russell body is not diagnostic of myeloma, right? Myeloma is your criteria. You must have definitely read in one of the ENT infection, Klebsiella rhinosclerometis. You can see Russell body. Russell body is in plasma cell, which can be seen in plasma cell benign proliferation as well as in malignant proliferation. It is never a diagnostic of myeloma, fine? It's false. Okay, next. I think four more questions. Let's see if the leaderboard can be changed now. dress are ectopic crests of transitional epithelium. Transitional epithelium is commonly seen in your bladder, right? So Walther dress can be seen in fallopian tubes and ovaries. It's proposed that Walther dress could be a precursor for your Brenner's tumor, which is also a transitional epithelium, right? So they are ectopic dress, which can become neoplastic, malignant or benign, which can be Brenner's, fine. Okay, we'll go for the last three. Okay. two seconds I think the poll will be a lopsided one this time great uh, it's not CCD4 there's no, I don't think so there is a gene called CCD4 Ranex2 is muted in cleidocranial dysplasia Ranex is also a gene muted in, in your uh, AML a translocated muted AML so the gene which is if it's muted inherit, uh, inherited way uh, by at birth it can result in cleidocranial dysplasia so, okay. the next one last two 
tub. Let's go. Okay, this is live for students who have uh, participated in the first round of quiz and qualified for the second round, fine. Okay. The marker to diagnose Ewing sarcoma, NKX 2.2. Okay, NKX 3.1 is a marker which is going to be useful for prostatic cancer and not Ewing sarcoma, right? 2.2 is the marker which is currently used for the diagnosis of Ewing sarcoma. Ewing has got an amazing uh, array of history of IHC markers, starting from CD99, Fly1, and now we have stopped with NKX 2.2, fine. Okay, the last question. The next one will be readable. Let's start. Elevated ESR is more common than polysthemia vera. I am sure you must have written polysthemia vera because we can easily explain it via the pathogenesis. But unfortunately, elevated ESR is more common statistically a paraneoplasty syndrome seen in renal cell carcinoma. Okay. okay. But that brings us to the end of the fourth round and the final round of the quiz. And let's have a look at the leaderboard. Wow. Let's see if it changes. Okay, there's an amazing leaderboard. Uh, Dr. H the Hustler has got 29,778 points. Simba and Saravanan, see you are also in the same uh, category. Simba and Sar uh, Hustler's gap is just 60 points. I think the fastest seconds would have given them. And all of you are about 22,000 points, right? So, especially in the top three or four, hardly there's a 1,000 po points difference, right? All the best for everyone who attended the quiz. And hopefully you'll be able to conduct few more quizzes like this. And best wishes, Hustler. And to Simba, Sarona, Neela, Pala, Sub, Vish, Abarna, Varadhan, and Shesha. Right? All the best, guys. And whoever's names is not here. Hopefully you'll conduct soon more in different subjects. And let's make it more interesting. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Bye-bye.